I think this issue is bipartisan. I think when it comes to South Carolina, there is wide and broad belief that the cops are the solution, not the problem. I want to be very clear and upfront. I don't support this effort to defund the police. Uh, I never have and never will. And, and part of the reason is because I come from a, a family where we've had law enforcement officers. U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham, challenger Jamie Harrison, agreeing on some topics, but mainly disagreeing on others. Coming up, we'll tell you everything you need to know about these two candidates running for South Carolina Senate. Good evening and welcome to the second election special in our series, Road to Vote. I'm Brendan Clark. Tonight, we're digging a little deeper into the race for the South Carolina Senate seat. The incumbent Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. He has been in this role since 2002. Prior to being the senator from South Carolina, he was elected into the U.S. House of Representatives in 1994. Also served in the Air Force for six years, then served in the U.S. Air Force Reserves for the remainder of his 33-year military career. Now, his challenger is Democrat Jamie Harrison. He was elected the first African-American chair of the South Carolina Democratic Party in 2013. He served in that role until 2017. And prior to his role as a representative, he graduated from Yale University in 1998 and Georgetown School of Law in 2004. On October 9th, we were able to speak with both Senator Lindsey Graham and Jamie Harrison during a candid conversation. They broke down their feelings on health care, coronavirus, and the possibility of a new stimulus check. News 2's Carolyn Murray was one of the moderators for this event. We'll hear first from Senator Lindsey Graham, where he stands on certain topics leading the nation's concerns. Senator Graham, just this week, negotiations broke down to provide a second round of relief to families yeah. and businesses impacted because of the coronavirus. Well, now that that first round has expired, a lot of people are losing jobs, yes. they're losing their health care, they're losing their homes. You were talking about providing relief. How <coughs> will you do that? How will you reach across the aisle to ensure bipartisan support to help families who are struggling and desperate for relief right now? By voting for a package, it will make a difference. I voted for phase three. It passed the Senate unanimously. It was a trillion dollars. I'm willing to do almost two trillion. I want the money to help the problem. The chamber is one of the sponsors of what would have been a debate, now is a conversation. My family ran a, re ran a restaurant, we have a liquor store, a bar, and a pool room in central South Carolina. I grew up in the back, what a great country, you can go from the back of the bar to being a senator. But I want to give liability protection to every business in South Carolina who plays by the rules. If you'll do what's required of your business, I don't want you to be sued because of COVID. My Democratic colleagues will not agree with that. I'm for a $1,200 check. I'm for hundreds of billions of dollars to help our schools safely allow our kids to go back. I'm for PPP. I just got back from Myrtle Beach in Charleston. Uh, the tourism industry is on its back. It was a tough summer. Nobody's traveling now. The golf courses are not being you know, run at all. The hotels occupancy is down. Another round of loans for businesses that are struggling, count me in. I just talked to the president at lunch. I've been on the phone with uh, Secretary Mnuchin. I am excited that Pelosi and Mnuchin are talking again. Count me in for another stimulus package. But we have to have liability protection so our businesses are not sued out of existence. Let's talk about the Affordable Care Act, Senator. If the Supreme Court is to strike down the ACA, Republicans have promised for years to repeal and replace. Yeah. Where is the replace? Uh, Ms. Graham Casty, can I talk to you a little bit about Obamacare? Obamacare in South Carolina has been a disaster. You were promised if you like your doctor, you can keep it. We had five choices under Obamacare. We're down to one. Premiums have gone up 30%. For a while, I was on Obamacare. My premiums went up 300%. My coverage almost was non-existent. So Obamacare, uh, three states get 35% of Obamacare dollars. They're California, New York, and Massachusetts. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and Elizabeth Warren. They're 22% of the population. What, do I, what would I like to do? I'd like to make sure that if you're in Spartanburg, you get the same amount of money from the federal government as if you lived in San Francisco. That would be a almost a billion dollar increase for us. Level out the funding, send the money to the state directly, 
bypass the Washington bureaucrat you'll never meet, put our local officials in charge of health care, allow our doctors and hospitals to talk with you, the patient, in your own backyard. The reason liberals hate my idea is because I'm trying to get money and power out of Washington, back here at home. Their goal of single-payer health care, I think, will reduce quality, increase cost, and my goal with Obamacare is to make sure we don't send a billion dollars to New York, California, Massachusetts. We control the money and we make the decision. Big choice election. Mr. Harrison is the associate chairman of the Democratic National Committee. He's a great spokesman for their cause. I'm a conservative Republican who reaches across the aisle with a record to prove it. I'm the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. I will fight for conservative judges. A lot's on the ballot. Law and order versus the mob and chaos. Conservative judges versus liberal judges. Free enterprise versus Bernie Sanders being in charge of your budget. I love South Carolina. It is my home. It is the best place in the world to raise children and to start a business. As long as I'm your senator, I intend to keep it that way. U.S. Senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham. Now we want to hear from his challenger, Jamie Harrison. Harrison points out the weaknesses of Senator Lindsey Graham's leadership and how he would lead this state differently if he won the election. Mr. Harrison, African Americans represent 27% of South Carolina's population, but of the 3,500 people who have died in our state, 35% of those people were black. What will you do to ensure access to medical care and health care for all people in our state? Yeah. You know, what the coronavirus did was it exacerbated problems that were already here. Uh, and I remember just hearing about the coronavirus and cringing because I knew the impact that it would have here in South Carolina, particularly on the most vulnerable communities. We live in a state where almost 250,000 people don't have access to health care because we're one of 12 states that have refused to expand Medicaid. Uh, 38 other states have, have expanded Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act, and South Carolina has failed to do so. And as a result, four of our rural hospitals in this state have closed, and we're seeing that same type of trend in the other states that refuse to expand Medicaid. You know, if you live in one of those communities, and it doesn't matter if you're black or white, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, uh, and you have complications with diabetes or you're impacted by the coronavirus, you have complications with a pregnancy. Instead of you taking you 10 or 15 minutes like it used to to get to the nearest hospital, now it takes you 25 or 35 or 45 minutes. That's a death sentence. And what those folks are looking for, they are not looking for a Democratic solution or a Republican solution, a solution from Jamie Harrison and one from Lindsey Graham. They're just looking for a solution. And we have a responsibility to the people here in South Carolina that uh, the leadership, and Lindsey Graham is emblematic of it, he's been here 25 years, have failed to do so. Mr. Harrison, I'd also like to talk to you about the stimulus relief package. Just this week, negotiations broke down to provide a second round of relief to families and businesses affected by COVID-19. Well, now that the first round has expired, People are losing their jobs, they're losing their health care, they're losing their businesses. How would you work beyond the aisle, across the aisle, and foster bipartisan support to pass something to help not only the nation's families, but families right here in your beloved community of South Carolina? Yeah, thank you for that question. You know, it breaks my heart to talk to small business owners and folks, uh, those who are, uh, are in unemployment right now and desperately needed that federal unemployment benefit. You know, again, I said 750,000 South Carolinians have lost their job as a result of this coronavirus, and many of them lost their health care as well. And, you know, our senator, Senator Graham, said over his dead body or over our dead bodies will he allow an extension of the unemployment benefit. As a result, because the benefit ran out in August, there's so many folks who are on the verge of being kicked out of their homes. They're on the verge of not being able to pay their bills. Uh, and our senator, who is so out of touch, didn't understand why it was important to continue that benefit. That benefit brought 20 some odd million dollars into the South Carolina's economy every week, every week. So not only did it benefit the families, but it also benefited the small businesses that are on the verge of closing. South Carolina, I don't know if folks know this, South Carolina is ranked 50th in the nation as it relates to PPP dollars per worker. That means 
49 other states are getting more money for their small businesses to stay open than South Carolina did. And so for me, in the end of the day, this is about what can we do to improve the state, not about Washington politics. And so I'll work with anybody who is looking forward to trying to build progress. Listen, you know, in the end of this campaign, as I've been saying, uh, I've lived the American dream. I'm, you know, I grew up in a mobile home and I'm now running for United States Senate. That only happens in America. Uh, you know, our state model, while I breathe, I hope, it is my life. It's the, it's the model of my life. But what I want in this campaign, and what I hope is, and it, you know, that I've inspired folks. Lindsey Graham is going to scare you. He's going to scare you about crime. He's going to scare you about everything. But we're tired of being scared in this country. We're tired of being scared in the state. It's time for us to come together as a people. And I hope through my campaign, a campaign that is built on hope, uh, that folks will see that and say that it's time for a new day. You have heard from both candidates still to come. News 2 political analyst John Brzezini joining us. He'll break down exactly what each of these candidates are going to need to do to win. And later, Election Day is almost a week away. We'll tell you the materials you need before heading to the polls.